was Jesus based on the Hindu god Krishna. Many mysticists think Jesus never existed and was just a legend stolen from the story of Krishna because Krishna was born of a virgin on December 25th. His birth was signaled by a star in the east and attended by angels and shepherds and presented with spices. He was persecuted by a tyrant who slaughtered thousands of infants. He is depicted with a foot on a serpent. He was a miracle worker. He taught through parables. He argued with the Hindu priests and called them hypocrites. He had a beloved disciple whose name translated to John. He was killed at the age of 30, rose from the dead, and ascended to heaven. It is said he will return to earth on a white horse to kill an evil prince. He was crucified on a tree between two thieves. He was said to be the lion of the tribe of Saki, and he was the second person of the Hindu Trimutri. So do we have proof Jesus was a mythic copy of the god Krishna? Well, for that to be true, some of these claims would have to be factually correct, but many of them are false or total distortions. First, Krishna was not born on December 25th. All evidence shows he was born in the summer, and he was not born of a virgin. His mother had seven children prior to Krishna. Krishna was just said to have been conceived without sexual intercourse. There is no evidence of a star signaling his birth. There were Hindu angels at his birth, but not shepherds, they were cowherds. And no spices, just flowers divinely given from heaven. These next two are actually true. He was said to be persecuted by a tyrant who slaughtered infants, and he is depicted on a serpent. But Jesus is not depicted this way in the New Testament, nor do early Christians present him like this. This came about later from Christians, but it doesn't even parallel to Krishna, who was actually dancing on the head of a serpent with a thousand heads in order to defeat it. Nothing like this ever happens in the Bible. Krishna was a miracle worker, but all deities are said to be, so this is too general to form any parallel. The next one is partially true. Krishna did teach, but not through parables. So generally just being a teacher is also way too general to make any type of parallel. It is also true Krishna did attack the Hindu priests for focusing too much on rituals. However, this next one is completely false. There is no evidence of a linguistic connection between these two names. John is just the English word for the name Yohanan and has no connection to India. Krishna was not killed around the age of 30. He lived to be well over 100. It is also false Krishna rose from the dead. After he died, his spirit just ascended into heaven, which is not a physical resurrection like what happened to Christ. It is a distortion of the myth to say Krishna is supposed to return on a white horse. A future incarnation of him is supposed to ride a white horse and kill all evildoers, which is similar to a view of how Christ will return. But this view of Christ is only one view in Christian eschatology. I myself am a post-millennialist and do not think Jesus is supposed to return for battle, but will return once the Great Commission has succeeded and live with us in the new paradise created on earth. There is no evidence Krishna was crucified on a tree between two thieves, no evidence he was said to be the line of the tribe of Saki, and he was not called the second person of the Hindu Trimutri. He was one of the ten avatars of Vishnu, which is more modalistic than anything. So some of these claims are false. But the parallels that are actually true have no power either, since Hindu scholars say Hindus were borrowing from Christian sources. Some scholars believe that, except for the name, the Krishna cycle of stories has borrowed extensively from Christian sources, especially in relation to the birth, childhood, and divinity of Jesus. The great Orientalist, Sir William Jones, held that the Spurious Gospels, which abounded in the first years of Christianity, found their way to India and were known to the Hindus. According to others, Krishna's victory over Kaliya is a travested version of Christ's victory over Satan, the serpent. The German writer Weber held that Krishnaism was indebted to Christianity on the grounds that the worship of Krishna as the sole deity was a post-Christian phase in Hinduism. In the legend of his birth and the celebration of his birthdays, the honor paid to his mother, Davika, and his life as a herdsman all showed Christian influence. Summing up all the data, Hopkins says, Considering how late are these Krishna legends in India, there can be no doubt that the Hindus borrowed the tales, but not in name. Dr. Edwin Bryant says these stories of Krishna that are similar to Christianity can only be dated as early as between the 4th and 6th century, with another scholar suggesting 
They may be as early as the second century, which is still too late to say the Gospels were a copy of them. So in reality, there is some borrowing, but scholarship suggests it happened the other way around, which would make sense since many of these stories about Krishna come from tales that postdate Jesus. So since that is the case, there is no evidence Jesus was just a myth based on Krishna.